So we are starting a new teaching today, which is going to be a series on, it, it, it entails the gifts of the Spirit, but really it's, it's entitled Making Room for the Move of God's Spirit. And so ideally what we want to keep in mind is uh, that there is both a God side and there is a man side to the move of God's Spirit because it's not all God. Uh, otherwise, you know, God would just move all the time. But if we look at the history of God working in the earth, God has the pattern of raising up men that will cooperate with him by which he is able to manifest himself through them uh, to accomplish his will in the earth. And, and so uh, that's what we're going to kind of gear ourselves to is making a room or, or making a, a create, we could say creating an atmosphere where we learn to cooperate with the Holy Spirit so that he can move. And uh, everybody, if you can please mute your microphones because uh, we're also recording this. <laughs> so, um, so that that's the that's the gist of what we want to do. We want to learn to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and uh, and and create that atmosphere by which He can accomplish what He desires. Now, I, I want to start with a scripture just in First Timothy. So 1 Timothy chapter 1, so this is Paul writing to Timothy, who was pastoring the church of Ephesus at the time, and he writes a very important element that I think many times we overlook or, or don't uh, give the attention to it that we need, and this is in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, he says, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So uh, I want you to understand that there are certain things that God speaks concerning our lives, that with those things we are able to walk in the victory that Christ has won for us. Um, so he says, you know, there were prophecies that went before on him. Well, this brings me to this presentation of the matter. Uh, imagine if those prophecies were not spoken. So if there were prophecies that Timothy needed to war a good warfare that were spoken to him, that he had to take a hold of and he had to use those, if they, those prophecies had not been spoken, then Timothy would be lacking in things that he needed to war a good warfare. And uh, so... One of the things that we consider about the gifts of the Spirit is, you know, that they are part of what God has intended for us to walk in the victory that Christ has won for us. And so if, if we have uh, gifts of the Spirit working in our lives, but we do not learn to cooperate with them and release them, then there are hindrances to the body of Christ and Oftentimes, people may experience defeat where they should be walking in victory. Uh, now, again, one of the things that I stated before concerning the gifts of the Spirit, or, or really concerning almost any Bible doctrine, there is both a God side to it and there is a man side to it. And we look at God at work in the history of man. When God wants to do something in the earth, He raises up a man to do it. Uh, we see him raising up Noah to preserve Noah and his family, or we could say to preserve a, a, a line of righteousness in the earth. Uh, we can see God raising up Abraham and delivering to Abraham the promises of the covenant that God uh, enjoined to him. We see God raising up Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt, and, uh, and, and Moses took them to the edge of the promised land, but then we see God raising up Joshua to take them into the promised land. And uh, time after time again, we see God raising up men who will cooperate with him so that God can accomplish his will on the earth. So when we talk about making room for the move of God's spirit, we're simply talking about ourselves being in a place and creating an atmosphere 
that God can move in, that God can move through us. Now, this brings me to the, the place where I want to start with this teaching. Of, of course, I've kind of laid some introduction. But in the book of Judges, so starting back in Judges, uh, let's turn to Judges chapter 2 and verse 10. Now, we have to remember, so this setting brings us to the place where Joshua had taken the people into the promised land and they began to possess their, their inheritance. And um, they, they've seen the mighty works of God. So they've seen God bring water out of the rock. They, many of them were there to see the Red Sea divided. So they've, they've witnessed the great power of God in demonstration. Okay, so in, in the days of Joshua, that is. Then what happens, though, is Joshua and that generation pass away. And a new generation arises. And it tells us this in Judges chapter 2, verse 10. It says, And also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Now, there, there's an important message here uh, that, that's going to branch almost in two different directions. Now, number one, notice it says that they did not know the Lord, nor the works. Okay, so, so this generation is not conscious of, is not exposed to, has, has not the knowledge of the mighty works of God that were done before them. And the, the second aspect we see about this is, okay, it's the responsibility of each generation to pass down to the next generation we could say the move of God's Spirit, learning to cooperate with God's Spirit. Uh, when I think of my own life, uh, a lot of what I experience today as, to, as pertaining to the gifts of the Spirit and operating in the things of the Spirit, I had witnessed in my dad's life. So it, it was almost like when, when God started moving upon me, I had known what it was because I was able to witness it take place in my dad's life and, and we could say the generation before me. Now, so there, there becomes this important thing that we must take heed to pass down to the next generation. Every, each generation should go beyond where the, the previous generation was. They, 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 get, uh, they, should, they should be further ahead in each generation. And so what we want to do is make sure that we are creating this, this atmosphere for the move of the Spirit, but not just us operating in the move of the Spirit, but us training the next generation how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, how to move in the gifts of the Spirit, how to uh, learn the voice of the Spirit so that they are learning to cooperate. Uh, now, uh, I want to bring in, for instance, in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel. Now, 1 Samuel, we, we are exposed to Samuel's beginnings. And so Samuel, as a child was dedicated to the work of the Lord, and Eli had taken Samuel in under his care. Uh, Hannah, Samuel's mother, dedicated Samuel to, to the Lord and to his work. Uh, so Samuel was, we could say, you know, presented to the Lord, given to the hands of Eli. Eli trained up Samuel. So uh, there becomes this time when... Uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we're going to start here, we'll read, starting in verse 1, we'll just read down till uh, about verse 9. He says, 
And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Now, so this becomes an important aspect. So Samuel has not yet been operating in the things of the Spirit. Uh, but, but God starts calling him. Samuel begins to hear God's voice. Samuel does not know it's God's voice. Samuel's a young boy at this time. And uh, so the Lord starts to call Samuel. Samuel starts to hear God's voice. And Eli starts to instruct Samuel what to do in responding to God's voice. And so we see that it says in verse 8, And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went in to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And of course, what happens? In verse 10, it says, And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And so what happens? Samuel begins to recognize the voice of God and begins to cooperate with the voice and the calling of God upon his life. Now, Eli was the one who helped Samuel to know, okay, the, the Lord is calling this boy. I need to instruct him what to do. And that's what Eli did. So Samuel began to respond and said, okay, Lord, I'm here. Your servant listens. You know, speak. Your servant's here listening. Uh, but the point is, again, so it, it becomes the responsibility of each generation to prepare the next generation for the workings and movings of God's Spirit. And because we need to remember this, uh, the gifts of the Spirit have not passed away. The gifts of the Spirit are not, you know, something that's for a select few. Uh, God divides them in the church severally as, you know, is good to Him. The, the Holy Spirit divides the gifts. Uh, and these things are everyday necessities in our lives. They, they are part and parcel of what God has called and purposed the church to be. That The church is never meant to function apart from the gifts of the Spirit. Now, that does not necessarily mean everything that goes on in the church is just, you know, the miraculous taking place, but it does mean that there should be a consistent operation of the gifts in the church uh, for ministering to the church, but also for reaching the lost. And so in, in the days of heightened uh, satanic attack, uh, we need uh, the, the, the manifestation of the Spirit to, to edify and build up the church and to put to flight the armies of the enemy. And so these are uh, things that are meant to be present, operating in the church, but a lot of times they aren't, and uh, partly because we have not done uh, due diligence to pass it down from generation to generation. And, uh, of course, a lot of it was even, we could say, uh, not lost, but was much more dormant in, in the dark ages and uh, some difficult times in church history uh, with, with the renewal uh, of the... The, the Pentecostal revivals of Azusa Street and uh, in, in Wales and so forth, 
with, with the, the move of God's Spirit coming back, uh, a lot of it in the early 1900s, um, there, there was again that, that passion and that fire. And, and we need that today again uh, in the church, not that there's not people that are passionate and on fire for God, but we need fire brands in the church that are, are stirring up people uh, to pursue the Lord and to begin to experience the move of God's Spirit and create an atmosphere for the move of God's Spirit. Because ideally, we know the scripture says in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And so we, we have to have the power and demonstration of the Spirit at work. So back to Israel, they, they, you know, they saw the mighty works of God, those who were delivered out of the land of Egypt, those who walked in the wilderness, uh, those who, who entered into the promised land. They saw the work of God and His mighty power, but then that, nation, that, that generation died and the next generation that arose, it says they knew not the Lord, nor were they, uh, you know, knowledgeable of his works. They, they, didn't, they didn't experience the works of God. They didn't experience his power. And, and what happened was that generation began to seek unto other gods. They, they began to pursue false gods and idols. And, and they, they, they walked away from the Lord because they didn't know him, nor did they know his power. And, you know, a lot of times, even if we look today, uh, many of the youth are kind of carried away by other things. And, and so the church has tried to satisfy the need. You know, we have uh, flashing lights many times, and we got, you know, loud music, or we, we've, we've gone to all these different entertainment routes to try to, to woo the young people in. Uh, but all these things that are just external are not going to satisfy the cry and the hunger that each man has for the spiritual, for the supernatural working of God. God created us with a desire for the supernatural. And so when they don't find that in the church where it should be, they go and pursue it elsewhere. And uh, many times get, you know, looking at the wrong things instead of pursuing, a, you know, what God really designed for man. Uh, the Bible even tells us to desire spiritual gifts, to follow after spiritual gifts. So it's not something that God, uh, you know, doesn't want us doing. It's something that God is interested in us being interested in. And so that is the supernatural working of God. So if we look at what happened with Israel... And what happens many times in generations, if we haven't properly trained up the next generation, if we haven't properly created in them a, a proper desire for the things of God, what happens is, is they, they get distracted by the things of the sense life. They're, they're distracted more by what their flesh is, a, what, what appeals to their flesh, what their flesh desires, rather than what their spirit is hungering for. And so when we look at the, the pattern of Israel also, Israel turns away from God, and what God ends up doing is raising up judges, deliverers, who end up delivering Israel out of the oppression that they find themselves in and turning them back to God. And, and many times with these deliverers, what does God do? God uses them and displays his mighty power at work with them or through them. Uh, of course, we can, you know, if we looked at Samson's life, Samson was one where we see the miraculous of God at work in his life to deliver the children of Israel. Well, what, what is God doing? God is again showing forth his power. God is, you know, is, is, is demonstrating what? The, the works that the that generation hasn't necessarily been seeing. And so the same thing is true in our day and our time. Uh, God is desirous of demonstrating his mighty power and his works. Uh, I remember one of the things that, that uh, my uncle used to quote, 
he would say, you know, God doesn't only want us to take his love, but he also wants us to take his power. So it's not just enough to take the love of God, but pity without a remedy is really no, no cure. I mean, if you, if you, you can feel bad for somebody, but if you have not the means to help them, you've left them in their condition and it's no cure for that person. But so it's not just enough to have compassion, but we also need the power of God in manifestation to help deliver them out of their situations. And that's what God did at those times. He would raise up a deliverer. He would raise up a judge who would also have a, 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 the working of God's power through them to deliver Israel out of their bondage. So God demonstrated his power delivering them out of oppressive hands. So ideally, and this, as I said, we're, we're going to do a series on these teachings that, that talk about creating an atmosphere for the move of God's Spirit or making room for the move of God's Spirit. Uh, what we want to do is we want to learn to give place to God, uh, not just be so uh, satisfied with our programs or you know, satisfied with this is how we've always done it and this is how we continue to do it. No, we want to learn to give place to the Spirit of God and ask Him or, or give place to Him. Because otherwise we can, you know, we can program the Holy Spirit right out of the whole thing. We can uh, make our own programs and, and, uh, and, you know, run our programs. But if we run our programs without the Holy Spirit, we're we're not doing anyone any good. So ideally, we want to be able to create an atmosphere for the move of God's Spirit. And that's what this particular series of teachings is going to be about, and uh, possibly getting into teaching on the specific gifts of the Spirit. But uh, the idea is not necessarily the specifics of the gifts of the Spirit, but the specifics of creating a place where the gifts of the Spirit can flow, creating a place where we cooperate with the Spirit so that He can flow through us as, as He desires. And that, that's the idea that God has in mind for the church. Uh, if we look at the, the life of Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with Him. Okay, so that's the idea. What we see in Jesus is what God has in mind for the church. How God anointed Jesus. God has anointed the church. God has put different members in the church. And each member having its proper place in the body. And so we want to learn how to, how, how to utilize the different members by cooperating with the Holy Spirit. Because that's where the church becomes profitable to one another, but also uh, in the world. We become the light that the world desperately needs. Uh, we, or we could say we become, we are the light that the world desperately needs, but we become the evidence to the world, that, that light shining. Uh, we are the light of the world, but let your light so shine. And it, uh, oftentimes if we aren't letting our light shine, uh, we are, you know, we're in the world, but the world isn't seeing much. So creating an atmosphere for the move of God's spirit. Now that brings me back to this concept and I'm going to try to finish up here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1, Paul says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And, and so what this verse of scripture actually means is pertaining things that pertain to the spirit concerning the things that pertain to the spirit i do not want you to be ignorant and so this is where we we are gonna kind of begin our study as we said each generation needs to train the other generation the next generation to be able to operate in the things of the spirit uh, some of that is by witnessing it. Some of it is by instructing it. Some of it is by doing it. And as we mentioned with Samuel, 
Samuel was introduced to the operation of the Spirit by God's Spirit calling him, but Eli instructing him in it. Eli instructing him what to do. And so we want to keep that in mind that as we are training people up to learn to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, we want to be those who are able to help guide and direct uh, others into obeying God and obeying His voice. So uh, keep in mind uh, that this is, this is what we are going to be teaching on. We're going to be teaching on things that pertain to the Spirit, specifically spiritual gifts, and that which concerns making room for the move of God's Spirit or creating an atmosphere for the move of God's Spirit. And we're going to begin to talk and teach about different characteristics that concern an atmosphere where the Spirit of God has free course or, or the, the Spirit of God moves. Now, uh, of course, what God is always looking for, as we said, is He's looking for someone to cooperate with Him. And so we want to be those people. We want to learn to be a person who cooperates with God's Spirit when God's Spirit wants to move, when God's Spirit wants to do something. And of course, Jesus was that man that perfectly cooperated with the Spirit of God, and we want to learn to imitate Jesus in the same way. And so uh, we're going to stop here uh, for today, and we're going to pick up this study next week as we continue to teach on creating an atmosphere for the move of God's Spirit. And so let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you. And Lord, it is, is our heart and our desire, Lord, to be used by you, to be pleasing to you. And Lord, so we ask, Lord, that you would begin to uh, instruct us, train us, as you called Samuel, Lord. Call us, call us out into the depths of the move of your spirit. Call us out, Lord into the places, Lord, where we uh, respond to your Spirit and are able to manifest the gifts of the Spirit. Call us out, Lord. And so, Father, we, we make ourselves available to you. We consecrate and dedicate ourselves to you. And we thank you, Lord, for it. We thank you, Lord, for your gifts and your callings on our lives. And we pray, Lord, that they will be brought to the fulfillment in each one of our lives, in Jesus' name we pray, amen.